key demand is a normal bell curve. So demand during three days instead of one day is not going to be a constant, right? It is basically going to be our, no, uh, using statistics, we will have to derive what is the distribution of demand during three days, lead time days, um, when we are given a single day demand D. All right, so uh, again, using our assumption above, single day demand D is given as normal distribution with a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of eight. And that often is quite tractable because we can establish daily uh, behavior, daily demand behavior from past data, right? What we might want to derive rather than recollect data again, right? So over so many inventory cycles, we collect the data for lead time number of days. We don't have to do that because we can always use statistics, all right, to, um, to determine what is demand during lead time if we are given uh, the daily demand. Yeah. So we know that in statistics, so from statistics, we know that um, normal distribution plus normal distribution, sort of writing symbolically, gives us normal distribution where the mean will add up. And if they are independent, then the variances will add up as well. So, so uh, what we have is that the demand during lead time is going to be uh, basically a single day's demand plus a single day's demand, but that's another day, right? Plus a single day's demand. So let's call it um, by notation single day's demand, first time, single day's demand, second time, single day's demand, third time. That is not to be confused with three times of single day's demand. All right, because um, three times a single day's demand means that if that single day is high, then all three days are high, and that's not true, right? Um, here, what we are trying to, to, to highlight of, or emphasize is that the three days, you can have one day high, two days low, all three days are low, all three days are high, various combinations, but not fixed. They're not locked in sync, right? So they are independent. So if my, uh, assuming that uh, L equals to three days, then we have one, two, three. But if L days, for L days, then we add up one, two, three, four, five until L, okay? So this is more like a statistical description than a, than a numerical summation, right? So what this means is that we will get uh, a normal distribution with a mean of uh, three times the mean of one day's distribution and three times the variance of one day's variance. So in other words, um, we can write that the mean of DL equals to, in general, L times the mean of single day's distribution. And the variance of DL is going to be L times the variance of single day's distribution. So in general, that's, that's going to be true. And more importantly, the standard deviation of DL is the square root of variance of DL. This is by definition. All right. And so when we take the square root that we will end up having square root of L, and just to make it clearer, times the sigma of T. All right. So now we are clear. And coming back to our numerical example where L is 3, we get DL, therefore, DL has a normal distribution because normal plus normal is normal, normal plus normal again is normal, and so on. So, so it will always be normal distribution whenever we start with a single day distribution being normal. And uh, three times the mean of D bar, that's 20, and sigma D, that's um, 8. Yeah. So we have three times 20, all right, comma, three times eight square. So what that means is 
uh, this is equivalent to normal distribution of 60 comma um, see what we normally do is to express the the variance as the parameter so what we do is we say 8 times square root of 3 bracket square all right so that's just to satisfy the normal di distributions uh, description notation so with this armed with this we now can come back and look at our bell curve here which is describing dl dl right where we started the event the phone call the we have reorder point number of tires that reorder point is something that we want to find and we want to describe it as saying that example we do not want our stock out to be more than two percent to be more than two percent so example we want the area to be at most 0 0.02 and therefore our service level our service level will be on everything else on the left hand side of this bell curve right so this is our service level and example therefore our service level is equal to 0 0.98 so we can say that we are running a service level of 98 percent okay we are running a service level of 98 percent now we fixed service level as our arbitrary business decision okay because we want to boast about it oh you know what my tire shop runs 98 percent yours is only 90 percent um but you pay a higher cost for holding the tires so we set the service level as an arbitrary uh, management decision so we set it um then the question is what reorder point should we have in order to support this service level okay but that while that is an inventory question it turns out to be a simple statistical question because all we need to do is we find the inverse cdf of service level and then we get our reorder point right so that is quite easily done in uh, in statistics so let's divide that so we want to find to find r given service level let's just summarize it as uh, r is equal to the inverse cdf of uh, normal distribution given service level as the probability so what that means again all right is that uh we can if you have um a ti calculator like this okay and show uh, all you need to do is to run the um inverse normal okay where's my inverse normal ah sorry should be the distribution so press second and bars Okay, you have the inverse normal, uh, which is the inverse CDF for normal distribution. You enter the left-hand side area because CDF is left-hand side. And happens to be that our service level is also always left-hand side. All right? The mean is our DL's mean, all right? our demand during lead times mean. But that was determined to be 60. All right, so we enter 60. And... Our standard deviation is square root 3 times 8. So 8 times square root 3. And we will then get readily our R is given by. So using inverse norm from calculator. 0 0.98 comma 60 comma 8 square root 3. We get 88.4576. Six. Just keep the precision there, all right. Uh, <clears throat> so that we are able to um, check by plugging R in to see that the CDF is zero point nine eight as as expected, and uh, for various comparison purposes. Okay. Now we can also write the z value if you have the z value so <clears throat>
from table lookup, we can always find the Z value of service level. Okay, so we can look up our table here. By entering 0 and 1, the standard normal, we get our Z value to be 2.0. 537. So that's going to be 60 plus 2.0537 times 8 square root 3. And we should get back the same answer because the TI calculator does it for us already. But what I'm saying is that uh, sometimes you may not have the TI calculator as I do. Uh, you may have more advanced calculator, you may have Excel. Uh, then you can do uh, directly the inverse norm. But um, if you're using the paper lookup, the table lookup uh, form, you might need to get your Z value first. And the way to do it is find the Z value, then use the mean of, I'm sorry, uh, this is uh, the mean of DL. Okay, uh, so we should change the notation. Yeah, you have to remind me, all right? So we have the mean 60 plus uh, Z value times the standard deviation of the demand during lead time. And that is a random variable that is normally distributed that we have found earlier on. All right. So um, we have found our answer. That's for this numerical example. And let's recap a little bit. Okay. So idea is that we have a service level. So management first decides on a service level. That service level needs to be uh, less than or equal to, of course, hundred percent, because remember, service level is a is a probability, right? And we need to establish what is the distribution of demand during lead time. I've given you a normal distribution situation, but while most in most uh, cases in real life, we it is safe to to assume normality. Uh, it can turn out that your particular inventory cycle behaves differently, not in a normal manner. It's normal to you, right? But it is not normally distributed. And then you will still be using the same thinking, same concept as service level, except your inverse CDF will no longer be inverse norm, but inverse um, something else related to the distribution that you have. Concepts are the same, however, right? Service level, probability of having things to sell, Stockout level, uh, probability of not having things to sell, and stockout is the event that we don't have things to sell. So, uh, recap, decide on the service level, calculate the reorder point uh, due to the service level, and also the behavior of the demand during lead time. So these two things come in to give you reorder point. Right? So at this point, we basically have done up the two numbers for continuous review dynamic demand uh, situation. That is, how many to order follow the EOQ formula, square root 2ds over h. Uh, when do we reorder? Follow the reorder point derived from um, setting a service level, the probability of having things to sell during the lead time. So we need to establish the distribution during the lead time all right, starting from maybe daily demand or directly observing the lead time demand, demand during lead time. So having demand during lead time, the distribution, knowing it very well, plus a uh, arbitrarily selected service level decided by management or yourself, or the exam question, then you can compute the reorder point, And then we have the two numbers, how many to order, when to order. 